Hi everyone, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. So it's been a while since we've done like a proper lengthy podcast. So thank you very much for tuning in on iTunes and SoundCloud and all good apps that you are listening on this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, of course, it's been a while and we've got a new setting. So big, big uh, shout out to the Salman Hotel for putting us up in their lobby area. So big shout out to them. We'll be mentioning them a couple of times in the video as well. So what we're going to be doing is literally talking from deadline day all the way up to current. You know, we've been... Uh, it's been a, quite a dramatic month, as it always is in Newcastle. It always is. There's always something to talk about. So we'll be matching up with like a few rants, uh, away days, the game itself, and a couple of under-23 news as well. But we're going to begin. I'm going to bring in Rob for this, um, for this bit because me and Rob were down London for um, Sky Sports News. You were loving that there, first of all, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I loved every minute of it, and thank you very much for you know making me a part of that. Uh, BT Sport as well. That will be viewed in or aired rather in October and November time. Yeah, so we were there, um, we went live and it, the day itself was, it was nervous weren't you, we were going live on TV, having to speak as a Newcastle yeah. fan first of all about a subject which does not bring happy memories or you know good times to the club. Oh, of course, I mean when you talk about Mike Ashley, I mean what positives can you take from that situation at the moment, but yeah um, it was, I was Fairly nervous doing it on uh, live TV for the first time, especially on a high profile channel like uh, Sky Sports News, uh, Deadline Day of all days as well. Uh, but yeah, like I say, thank you very much. And uh, Big thing for us though, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. I hope, hopefully that was to sort of bring the channel in uh, more of the public eye and hopefully get more, uh, you know, followers, subscribers from it and uh, so they can, you know, see our great content. So we were there, um, obviously I had my say, which I just said, it's a joke, I'd, but yeah. we've seen Federico Fernandez come in that day, and we'd, right, right until the last minute one, it was up until like, I think it was after deadline day where they actually announced it. Yeah. Um, what do you make of our, I mean our deadline day is never great, but no. what's the positives, at least it was somebody? Oh yeah, like you say, well, it, it was someone, it was I suppose Fabian Shaw and Federico Fernandez have been Chancellor and Bemba's replacement almost. Um, Fernandez, I was a bit sceptical to begin with before I saw him play in a Newcastle shirt um, because he wasn't even first choice at Swansea, relegated Swansea, may I add. And, uh, but he has impressed me so far, Chelsea and... Um, Man City. City, yeah, Man City, yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't have the best of games against uh, Notts Forest, but um, well, we'll be talking about that, won't we? But yeah, I have been impressed with him uh, thus far. Well, it was Florian Lejeune's replacement, really. Paul, I'll just get your yeah. quick thoughts and summarise, just in general, um, the transfer window at the club. Just yet again, it's just a typical Ashley transfer window, isn't it? A bit of a damp squid. Got his fingerprints all over it. Uh, targeting players from relegated clubs, looking to feed off the scraps and carcasses of clubs who were getting relegated, looking for bargain buys. It's, it's yeah, just well. typical. Same old, same old. Nothing really to get excited about. We just replaced players sort of like for like, but we didn't certainly get what we needed to see ourselves through to January, so that's the disappointing thing you know, f for yeah. me. But to be fair, some of the players we have signed have been decent so far, so got a few bargains in there yeah we'll talk more about Mike Ashley later so we're not we're not going to try and talk about Mike Ashley dead quickly although we didn't spend much Mark do you think the squad is actually better than what it was last season a, a little bit do you think the squad is I think I think the first 11 is the same but I think the squad for replacement is better when you look at it then you look at it and you think if Rondon gets injured if Yossi gets injured that's it where's was trying to so yeah Yes, the squad, if you look defensively, can look okay, but I, I just think we're lacking again a little bit there. Look at how we're missing Shelby. We've got no one in the squad that's going to be like him, so we're missing him. Richie, again, yeah, we haven't got anyone like him, so we're missing him. So, yes, probably overall the squad's stronger there, but I still think there's little parts and little areas there where we haven't got the like for like replacement there, and that's where I think we'll, we'll struggle at times. Do you not think, like, because if you look at them players out who were in rever reverse, Reverse reserve, um, the likes of Mitrovic and everybody in Bemba, they wouldn't play this season. Whereas the likes of, you know, the Fabian Chairs and the Fernandez and stuff will play. So that's surely a benefit for Rafa. Although I know, I'm trying to say the positives out of this because I know he wants to go and spend money on money. But the positives are he's got players that you can actually come in and they'll play and do a job for him. Oh yeah, the players that were brought in there, I think, are a good addition there. But you look at the likes of Sen and Gale out there. 
Gill, I still think we should have kept there because it's someone there. We've got three choices up front there rather than just the two there. You look at the likes of Marino. Uh, yeah, it, it, he probably didn't want to be here, but I would have kept him there because I still think he's probably as close to a Shelby type playmaker in terms of what we had as midfield. Yeah, okay. Kyle, I'm going to come to you in a moment on the next subject. So, we're just going to quickly come off about that because everybody talks about transfers, deadline day. It, let's quickly move off that. And let's get let's start getting into the very next day. I'm going to come to Paul and Kyle on this one. Is that Mike Ashley goes and buys a massive share in House of Fraser a day after deadline day? Um, that caused outrage, and you on Facebook, our Facebook page were going mental. <laughs> um, even, I think you did do a video on that as well, didn't you? I did, yeah. I was absolutely saving. I was still really, really mad for the whole transfer window and particularly the end of it when there were names again that were service and we were so desperate that I felt the need for more firepower when you consider our lack of goals last season and our, the frustration that Rafa was feeling, all of that. You didn't and hold back either on that video, did you? Definitely not. Definitely not. When it comes to Mike <laughs> Ashley... It, it, it is, it's black and white, isn't it, as far as I'm concerned. And he's got all this PR lot around him and all these people advising him. But surely anyone, anyone with half a sort of ounce of common sense, decency and intelligence would know that it, the, the timing of that particular deal absolutely reeked and it just felt like another low blow to the Newcastle fan base because you know we've got all this money that we've been promised all through the season last you know the, the last summer we were told you know we just got up we've got to work towards this TV money you get the TV money you make a profit on the transfers you're expecting some action you're expecting players in names are being linked scouts are out there we know we knew scouts were out there looking at players nothing much happens and then the day after he does what he does and it, and, it, and it felt almost like two fingers up to the Newcastle support and that's how I felt it and that's how I took it. It felt like a, a bit of a personal attack and a sort of, I'm in charge, you know, like by Mike Ashley, I'm in charge, I'll do what I want when I want and it's as simple as that. And I can literally feel it inside of me now. Try Just to keep it clean. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because of where we are. But. I can literally feel myself bubbling up inside. Any time you, 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 your chest gets tight, you, you literally, I could, my head could literally explode with rage when it comes to that man. Because everything he does, it seems to be pinpointed and targeted. It just knocking us down an, a, another peg. It, it just doesn't matter which aspect of the club it is. It's like, you, you, you know, you, you'll sit there and you'll chant about me and you'll do this and you'll do that. Well, I'll just do this. And he just needs to be sitting there laughing. And you see him untouchable. Then he does this deal to buy this another another store, and then you find out the details about it, and you find out that he could have helped them out beforehand, and he's again done it in an underhand way, so he doesn't have the pensions liabilities and this, that, and the other. And it is just so much typical Mike Ashley. That is his way of do, doing stuff, and that's why I was touching on with the transfers as well. Yeah. But let's not go for proven. Let's go for the scabs. Let's go for the carcasses of the teams that are being relegated. Let's go for the bargain mice from abroad where I know they've got clauses in. It's always the same. He never buys proven quality. He, he, he could have bought that the department store before, and, but no, he'll wait until it's at the bottom ebb and then pick, cherry pick and stuff. And that's just, that's just Mike Ashley all over. I, I, I can't really say... I can't really describe them the way that I would like to describe them. Because of the watch, out for, watch out for the videos for that. Yeah, but he's... I mean, some people will have seen the Despicable Mike things that have been put out recently and all of his little minions. And to keep it clean, that's probably the best way of describing it. He is just a despicable, low-life scum. There's, there's no other word for it. It's like a, a, a sort of a combination between Fagan and Del Boy. He's, he's absolute. If, if it wasn't our club, it might be a little bit funny. But it's only funny if it's not your club. You ask Rangers supporters about it. You ask Newcastle supporters about it. We're not laughing. But if it's Sunderland, if it's Middlesbrough, if it's Manchester United, if it's any of them, they'll think it's absolutely hilarious. But the timing, for me, bang out of order, bang out of order and I was not. 
a happy camper to say the, to say the least. Right, I'll come off that. Kyle, I know you've been waiting patiently because I know Paul likes to talk. Um, that was a massive kick in the teeth for us, wasn't it? The, well, Paul pretty much summed it up. It is. It's a, a, a huge PR failure by Newcastle, I think. Well, by Sports Direct and Mike Ashley. Like, we needed we needed to push the boat out. We needed a centre forward. We needed a number ten. We needed a couple of players like to really improve the squad. It's not like like the team that's there is it it it's all right, but you just feel like the ambition wasn't there. Like you look at you look at Fulham who spent thirty odd million on a on a on a decent player. Even Bournemouth spent twenty odd million on a midfielder. That that's unproven in the Premier League. There's just no feeling that he's pushing the board out at all. So from the going by House of Fraser day after, and we can joke and say he's a German midfielder and whatnot for ninety million, but at the end of the day. Just absolute fucking joke he is. It's it's not great on us, and I, I've got to try and play devil's advocate because that's what it is. It's a debate, isn't it? So, has he saved thousands of jobs, hundreds of thousands of jobs? Well, for, according to the according to the video, he, ha, he has. But Paul says he could have he could have um, built them out long before it came to that. So it's just a case of he's went in and played played the hero when he could have done done something about it a lot sooner instead of instead of like a. A day after the tra- like, I can, un- like he's done good good things in saving a co- saving jobs for people because I don't want to say like oh well you, um, I, I want people unemployed to, to see Newcastle buy players I'm not saying that at all but the timing is it's a kick in the balls to Newcastle fans definitely because the frustration all summer have been well can we can we buy someone that will really improve the squad can we do this can, like can we can we help Rafa give him the tools to do the job but. At the end of the day, he hasn't, and he's went and bought House of Fraser the next day, which is—it's just I think it's just a big, um, like, like a big, like a, just a statement to Newcastle fans just to piss them off. Really, I think that's all that is. This is two fingers up in us lot, right? Uh, uh, let's bring, let's get out the mass. I'll bring Rob, Mark, and Kyle back in this one. Paul, you can, sit, you can chill for a couple of minutes, and then I'll get you on the next one. Um, first game of the season, and. Uh, I've said this numerous times, Rob, that uh, for the first time in a long time, wasn't actually that excited for the start of the season. Let's put that on one side anyway. Um, we did go down to Spurs to a 2-1 defeat. Hoslo scored. I mean, that's a rarity in itself. Um, more on him and later. But that was um, a surprising display despite we went down to defeat, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you take the all of the off-the-field issues that happened back in 2008, and that had a massive effect on the on-field uh, performances, um, and that eventually led to us going down. But we actually played with a lot of fight uh, against Tottenham. I mean, I might be sort of uh, being a bit um, thinking way ahead here, but, uh, you know, we play really well against Tottenham, we play really well against Chelsea, against Man City, the big, the top six teams, and yet Cardiff and Notts Forest, we just don't turn up at all, and that is just incredibly frustrating, but for first impressions of the season, considering the poor pre-season, I'd say, uh, the poor pre-season, the off-the-field transfer things that we've all gone into now, to play like that against Tottenham, you know, it was we were very unlucky not to get a draw out of that, but at the same time, you know, it's Tottenham they just had that little bit of quality over us on the day, which gave them the victory. Mark, how would you say that Spurs game went for you? Frustrating. Why? We were so good defensively last year, and that's what got me where we are there. And it was just defensively we looked poorer there, and I think that's what let Spurs in there. Again, going forward. As much as everyone's late, I actually thought Yosley probably had one of his better games. I would agree. For that. But it was just defensive mistakes, defensive errors in there that, that let them in there. We just didn't close down, we were giving them too much space. So the frustrating thing is there because I think Spurs were there to yeah, at least get a point, maybe if not three. But we didn't deal with chances and we let the defence let me down. How did you see that from your eyes, Kyle, that the Spurs game went for you? Well, unlucky. We played really well. Um just uh, as as Rob says, they had, they had a little bit more quality on the day. And to be honest, I think Spurs Spurs fans going back down to London would have said they got a bit lucky because we hit the bar twice as well. So th- there was like going into the game against Cardiff, there was a lot of positives to take. So I wasn't too disheartened. I was happy with the performance, and 
leading up to the game, as you say, you weren't looking forward to the season. It's because there was loads of problems off the field with like Lascelles having a row with like. Um, the owners about squad payouts or something like that that was going into the season the bad transfer window like among among fans it's the thing that kept up last season Rafa played on it a lot was unity and going into the first game unity wasn't something you'd be able to describe Newcastle's team because of all the problems with the payouts and the transfer window it just seemed discombobulated to be honest and like Going into the first game, it just felt negative, but the, it was a really positive performance, which turned a lot of people's mind, like it turned them into believers again. Going into the second game against Cardiff, but um, yeah, well, all right. It was, it it wasn't, a, it never an easy game. Tottenham, they beat well last season as well, like two seasons ago, in the like when we first came up as well. So um, it didn't it didn't surprise us that we got beat Tottenham because they're a fa they're a fantastic team, but um, yeah, plenty of positives. The thing that you said about the Tottenham fans were heads obviously with the Tottenham team and had the bad fan expressions on, um, and they were saying that you know we were hard done by they, they shouldn't have won that game Newcastle should have got something. So when the opposition turn around and say. Um, and our expressions are full of full of character. I don't know if you've if you have seen it, but he's a mad man. Even he said it in his lingo. So expressions, if you're watching, shout out to you, you crazy man. Um, so yeah, it was it was a spirited performance. And then the same day, and we'll talk about it now rather than just doing it after each game. Paul, I'm going to come to you so I can have a breather because um, I know you like to talk here. Yeah. So we had a protest on the day um, of the game. I was, how many were there? Who, who went to it? Any is there? I did. You, you, so all th you three were there. Um, was it a small turnout or do you think it was small dead quickly? Uh, it was a lot smaller for the Chelsea game. Yeah, um, cause of the, was that because of the weather? Yeah, quite possibly and also three hours before kickoff. Whereas the Man City game it was just uh, an hour or two before kickoff, and also Saturday morning you've got, that's kind of the shopping peak, isn't it? So. Yeah. I think it was too early as well that, that Chelsea one. So we had the, we had the Spurs one, the Chelsea one for me I thought was a bit oh, a bit of a PR disaster personally. For me it was three hours before kick off. I mean fans don't come into the game it's normally until about an hour before it kicks off. Um, yes, you may get the odd few coming in now earlier to, to go have a few pints and that, but it was I didn't think the rain helped. I rather not many turned up, but the, the big one is the Arsenal one for me, Paul, because it's not at Northumberland Street, it's actually going to be at the club store where they're going to target it. And you would think... You mean Sports Direct? Yeah, OK, the club store, we can call it Sports Direct. <laughs> Sports well, Direct. It, so they're going to be targeting that at the home game and there's naturally people are just going to be walking past. Yeah. It's going to be natural, like people go, oh, what's going on? Because a lot of them wouldn't have seen it. And that would surely gather more momentum, more people, more press, more people talking about it, wouldn't it? A good thing? That's that's the key thing for me. It, it's the press side of it. It's to get our word out there because if you look on the press and the, the, main, the main flow of it, it, it all seems to be mates of Mike Ashley or friends of friends or people who can't say stuff because they're told that they, they've got to be neutral or this, that and the other. Um, to me, the protest outside the stadium, it will get the casual, people are walking past involved, it will look bigger, it will look better, it will sound a lot nastier and and that is ultimately what, what we need. We need to get that message over there that we, we've had enough. This, this is not for five minutes. You know, people of support other clubs might think oh it's typical Newcastle fans it's a knee, knee jerk reaction it's going to blow over it's this that and the other. It's, it's not this is a decade of absolute stupidity mediocrity relegations so on and so forth so I'm looking forward just to seeing a more groundswell of support and hearing it and seeing it on TV and it being reported on I think that against his, his, his baby Sports Direct with everything that's going off with, with that at the moment and directors not being happy is bound to have some effect so I, I would welcome that. I think I think what will be good, I'll bring you Rob in this, is that we'll be obviously ourselves, other YouTube channels, other social media accounts, it's not just the media, it's actual fan media and aspects will be jumping on that as well, gain, gaining the momentum as well. Quite possibly. Um, the way that I see the protests towards Sports Direct is that yeah, by all means, Newcastle fans are boycotting Sports Direct, and yes, by all means, completely 
get that. But at the same time, Mike Ashley, you know, one group of supporters against, you know, how many other uh, teams are there in the country, they're not going to boycott Sports Direct. So that means Mike Ashley is still getting the money in, you know, even if we are boycotting Sports Direct, he's still getting the money in. But so I think instead, when we protest, you know, when we tell, say, for example, a, a non Newcastle fan, that, oh, I'm boycotting Sports Direct because of how Mike Ashley is treating the club. You know, like what Paul said, it's, it's funny if, if you're not a Newcastle fan. They're just, well, they're, they're just going to say, well, I'm not going to boycott Sports Direct because of what your owners do to your club. Yeah. Instead, what we should do is look at the way Mike Ashley is disgustingly, disgracefully treating the employees of his business. You know, the health and safety, the unpaid work. Zero hours. Zero hours. I like there, there's a long list, not a short list, a long list of problems and unethical um, areas of that business. So you know, tell your friends, tell your family, tell the stranger that you see on the bus tomorrow, you're boycotting Sports Direct because of the unethical ways that he is running that business. And then, you know, that might appeal, appeal to the non Newcastle fan, yeah. Yeah, that is unethical. You know, perhaps I will boycott Sports Direct because of how he's running that business. Because that is just not right. That is just not right. Okay. Yeah, all right. And, 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 and then it might have an effect on him. Because Sports Direct, it's his baby. Let's try and get as many people as possible to boycott Sports Direct. Are you all right? Are you okay? Right, okay. Touchy subjects, you know, it does affect the people. And you can still, you can see, obviously, these two on the end starting to get a little bit rivaled up, rived up, and thinking, well, wait a minute, I've got to check where I am for a minute. Um, so we'll be coming off that, come off that now. And then I just want to talk about, I'll talk about this bit, and then I'll come on to you two in a minute. Is that we're seeing two youngsters sign for the under 23s, which was Yannick Torrio, which we knew about for a long time. And we're seeing the winger Longello come from West Ham, who was a free agent. Now, hopefully, those guys, we've seen them in a couple of friendlies, haven't, haven't featured in the league as of yet in the cup. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those cases that is your local talent not good enough because you're bringing people in from out, out elsewhere. We're talking about the under 23s lots of times on this video. Who knows? I mean, it's one of them. I mean, I think the youth squad, again, that falls over off Mike Ashley and not investing in all of that. You could probably look at that. There's no, no one developing, so Newcastle have to go out and look elsewhere. But the best of luck with those two lads. Hopefully they'll kick on. Uh, Yannick Torre has got a reputation of scoring goals for fun for young boys as reserve team, so hopefully he'll crack on and start getting some game time for Ben Dawson's side. Right, moving off that, um, let's talk about the trip to Cardiff. Which moves me, <laughs> look, I'm not laughing. Poor chat it was. Um, I mean, that was an absolute nightmare to get to, first of all, that traffic around Birmingham. Oh, that tells us about an hour and a half stuck in that. <laughs> well, it was seven hours to get there, that was torture, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was torture. Do you know what it was? It, it's, a nice, it's a nice city, it's a nice area there. The, the locals were friendly on there. But, God, that game wasn't worth it. That wasn't worth the travel there. Ah, uh, Kyle, you don't like travelling, do you? I'm not the biggest. Well, I don't think anyone likes travelling. Just it's one of them, and you have to you have to do that to get the Newcastle games. And in the end, I think I, I disagree with Martin saying it wasn't worth it because I think it was. It was a good weekend, but um, yeah, no one likes travelling really, do they? <laughs> we met Fordy down there as well. Um, we went to the game. We'll talk about the game in a minute. But going back, um, I was having kittens because I took the wrong turn off. I was like, not paying twice for, for that was Kyle's sat nav, not mine. Yeah. We, got, we got there perfectly with my sat nav, but. Kyle on sat nav is just yeah, not good, so so we had to take the toll road. Actually, it was quicker. I think it was actually quicker taking that, ironically, even though I was panicking. I'm not paying twice for a toll. No way, I'm at. So I was taking a little hissy fit in the car. More on the car, by the way, later on in this video. Um, so, the Cardiff game. I'm going to come to these three because obviously we were there. Um, I mean, it was nil nil, yes. But people are going to look at first. I mean, talk to me about the Isaac Hayden one because we went, we seen Mankey and he was getting tortured in the first half. I thought Josh Murphy was getting the better of him, and it was an awful game. He went off. Hayden, come on! But what was he thinking? Just kind of flying in. He's only been on the pitch about ten minutes. I don't think he was thinking. I think it was just a moment of madness. I think he just thought, right, I'm going to go for the ball, and he just went in there. Yeah, it, it's going to be controversial. People are going to say, oh, it's a definite red, or oh, yeah. But if you look at I think it's a red. It's one of the, yeah, but if you're going to give that as a red, you have to give the one the other one as a red. Which we'll come on to next. But it, it's just that. Funny enough, though, I actually thought when we went down to 10 men after he crossed it, no, 
we played a little bit better. We did. Even the Cardiff lads who came on the Bluebirds TV said that we played better when we went out with 10 men as well. I don't know, maybe we need to start with 10 men and see how we go. What do you make of um, the Kennedy carry on? Because we know we, we didn't know it inside the stadium, but later we learned you know, he kicked out and it was a stupid act. It was, let's be honest. It was a red card yeah. if the referee had seen it. Well, he did see it, tell a lie. We didn't even give a yellow, which is, anyways, crazy, but we got away with it. Just, and then we've seen the Harry Arter challenge gone flying in as well. But what do you make of like for the Kennedy's challenge and then stepping up to be the penalty taker? Well, Kennedy didn't have the best of games that day, did he? Um, I seen a stat after the match where he didn't complete a pass in the first half. Um, like a That's a joke. But I'm like a modern day footballer. Yeah, like it is. Um, I mean, in my fan cam, I didn't get on his back too much. I support the lad, and I think he's got an abundance of talent, and he is one of our better players, whether people like to admit it or not. At the back end of last season, he was one of the. The, the people that led, led Newcastle to staying up last season, whether people want to say that or not, people can say his attitude or whatever, but last season he was he was spot on for Newcastle, but on Cardiff he, he had a really bad game, and I didn't think it would get any worse than that, but it did at Forest, <laughs> so he, he did manage to get worse somehow, but... Um, it, let me ask you this question, if you knew he had kicked out inside the stadium after the ground, would you have changed your mind on him after that fan cam? No, because um, at the end, at end, at end of the day, a player can't have a bad game. Like you shouldn't be kicking out with players like he did. It's just asking to be red carded, like a bit like Hayden did when he was sna snapping through people left, right, and centre before he got sent off. So he was, it was just asking to be sent off. Fortunately, the referee kept him on the field. I think we were lucky, lucky, very lucky. And you could say about the Harry Arter. Just quickly touch upon Rob. Dead briefly, you would have seen that the action on the game on the TV. Yep. Um, what was your initial thought on that? I uh, totally agree with it. I think we uh, were better when we uh, went down to 10 men uh, without Hayden. Uh, it was a very poor game uh, for the neutral and I think well, Kennedy, he had an absolute shot going in the penalty in the last moment to uh, just sort of sum that up perfectly that he had a poor game. And no one, no one really had a good game to be honest, even you could say the same for Cardiff, you know, they're really lacking the firepower. Uh, needed to perhaps stay in the Premier League, so you know when January comes around they'll be needing another striker. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I can really say. I don't yeah, really know okay. how to expand on that. Paul, did we get that point because again our defence performed once more? The Cardiff game. Yeah. To be fair, when I was looking at it, I mean afterwards you're kicking yourself and you're thinking penalty at the end. We should have, regardless of bag three points, then there would have been huge. But sort of sitting there looking at it and you're thinking well Tottenham game we could have should have you know had something out of that Cardiff we could have should have had it you reckon I say I don't think we deserved now from Cardiff I thought but did, uh, they didn't and we had a chance yeah. it was on a plate we should have taken it um, it's one of them things it was gutting absolutely gutting at the time absolutely gutted uh, because we knew in the, the sequence of games that we got how big that would be and you know that the longer it goes on we're out to win the more the press drilled up the sort proper that is because it's it, it's it's good for them. Um, so yeah, it, it was it was it was proper it was proper good and we should have, although we didn't deserve it, we should have took care of that three points and even with a bad performance, we should have brought that back up uh, home with three points, which wouldn't have made the. That all the travelling and stuff is bad for you, lads. No, it wasn't. <laughs> well, at least we didn't get beat. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Um, just want to touch upon Rafa Benitez because he was criticised for Kennedy stepping up, and Kennedy is actually the second designated penalty taker on the on the on the team. So that's the reason why Kennedy stopped stepped up because Richie had already been gone off. So right, and welcome back um, again. Uh, nice setting this for the Salman. I think uh, it's pretty good. The time bridge behind one that we're up. Oh yeah, it's a lovely background, perfect location, I think, this uh, this lobby room. I actually quite like the setting here, so again, thank you very much for the Sandman for uh, putting it up again. Right Rob, um, the next one we're talking about was that uh, magnificent under-23s win yep. against Sunderland. You were there with us, me and Will, as well. Um, what a night that was, not just to, I mean, because we don't have a time we are Derby anymore because unfortunately that's not me having a pop at Sunderland is that's a matter of fact the two leagues lower than us so we might not get a league Derby for a minimum maximum minimum maximum two year so to, that's the next big thing it was quite a big f crowd one there was how many was there, there was about 3,000 was it there yeah or something like that um, there's a big crowd and 
uh, not just to win, but to actually go and blow them away. <laughs> I don't care if it's under 23 level, that's some performance, isn't it? Yeah, it was a great performance. It was great to see our youth side step up because they have been struggling of late. I know we had that clear out in the summer, but uh, yeah, that 5-0 win, it was a great example of seeing wh which players are you know, capable of this under-23 side. And we saw a lot Sean Longstaff there, and since then he has uh, made uh, some appearances for the first team, and it was great to see because he absolutely ran the show in that 5-0 win. And Luke Sharman got his loan. Dark Hunter yeah. Stanley as well, because he's obviously the goal scorer and hopefully Ellis Sonson has scored more than uh, the under-23s later and he scored as well, but that was just a, there's a lot of banter on social media saying Sutherland was saying, oh, you're a, you're a, you're a jumping on because the reserves be our reserves and all this, and at the end of the day, if, it was, if the foot was reversed on the other foot, foot was reversed on the other foot? That's not the right word. I know what you mean. Um, if it was put on the other foot, they would be doing it to us, wouldn't they? So you would get yeah. that banter regardless, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, definitely. And you, there's, it's just it's just banter at the end of the day. I mean, yes, you would say things that you you'd probably would think is, is childish if it came from a Sunderland fan. But that's that's football. That's the great thing about football and banter. Yeah. Um, what else can I say? It was an absolutely. It was always a cracker night. It was an amazing night as well, and especially for um, youngsters because a lot of them are Geordies. And a lot of them from your neck of the woods as well, from North Shields, aren't there? So, um, I think. We out there. Say again? We out there. We out there. We are we on the coast, man, are we? Get more central, man, for two years. So, not just that, it's like the local lads would have loved that in their dressing room. And just to say that, and even Steve Harper was saying, even after the Doncaster winch will come on as well, mm -hmm. to see the dressing room like that, it brings back memories for him as well. And it, because it was, I think it was nine or ten Geordies on the pitch at once, and that was it's a brilliant night for them in particular, the lads. And they would have had the so again, make it the first team yet. Check a trade trophy. Well, we might get well, the first. What was the final? Let's yeah, they, they might get one later on the competition. Mind you, Northumbria, Northumbria Police will have a field day <laughs> with that. Right, um, negative pundits. Who wants to have a pipe up of this one? Um, you know, we'll have to bring it up because these pundits that keep coming out. And you can you can praise the ones who have the likes of Steve Howie, Alan Shearer, even Danny Murphy stuck up for. Says that Rafa only played defensively, but he never plays that every week. You can understand why. And then and then you've got the likes of Andy Gray, Richard Keys, Dennis Wise, Tim Sherwood. Bellamy. Bellamy. I see Bellamy's hit and miss. You'll say nice things and bad things, but he's not as bad as oh, the others. He's a, he's a poison dwarf. He is, but I mean he's not as bad as what the others are. No I don't yeah. think he's on. I don't think he's on level another level. But what do you make Mark, of? these pundits who keep piping up and are getting a lot of air time and I think the companies use them as well because it gets the debate going that's what companies want well some of the ones you'll probably look and they'll probably have very close links to a certain Mr Bishop <laughs> which one is that the specky one that's always sitting next to Charlie at games <laughs> I thought you meant Dennis Wise hey I'd rather not mention him if I had to <laughs> Kyle, what do you reckon of the, these pundits that keep piping up? Let them say what they want at the end of the day. Their, their opinions are relevant at the end, end of the day. Rafa even says he's not going to lose any sleep over it, and neither am I. At the end of the day, they're just... Andy Gray's never liked Newcastle, neither is Richard Keyes. When, 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 the, when they used to commentate over games on Sky, they used to slate Newcastle all the time. As a kid growing up, the, the three things I hated was like Middlesbrough, Sunderland and, and Andy Gray. Like, growing up. <laughs> He was a proper, he was a proper dick to Newcastle fans all the time. So when he got sacked for he, for, for what he did, it was it, it was a relief because it's like, well, thank God he's off with flipping screens. So he done me flipping head in as a kid. The thing is with that is that people bite to it. That's the issue. I think they've got it. In particular, on social media, people do bite. It and they just that, that, that's why they do it. That's why they try and get Newcastle fans to fight. Look, uh, bite. Look at um, look at Richard Key saying um, saying one minute he, he he hates Rafa Benitez and everything that he stands for, and then he says, "Oh, well, I've got protection. I'll get you all arrested." It's like, uh, like jog on, man, will you? I just want to uh, talk about the other side of the pundit side of things as well, uh, Paul, yeah, because. Uh, you know, Pete Graves, our mate, Keith Downey, our mate, um, they get a lot of stick for reporting the news and they're not allowed to go and have an opinion because they're not allowed to, the reporters, they can't have a personal opinion. So do you think do you think it's a vicious circle in the media, no matter which side of the fence you're on, the good, the good cop, bad cop? To me, the, the funny thing is, you're allowed to have a negative opinion on Newcastle, but to me it sounds like you can't have a positive 
sort of spin on it and that, that's that's what sort of grinds my gears a little bit about the situation if you go back to keys and keys and gray who are just saying stuff just to try and desperately stay relevant because they're what over at doha or whatever rock that they climbed underneath after all that kicked off <laughs> it's just absolutely pathetic it goes back to what carl was saying you always remember in that five nil commentary and i've watched it back i don't know how many times i mean i was at secondary school at the time the first goal goes in off peacock it's not over the line, it's not over the line. He's always been biased against Newcastle. You could have umpteen examples of that. But I do feel, going back to your point about some of the other ones, like the, you know, that you mentioned through its sky, uh, even like Jay Humphries and stuff, it's hard to have a positive opinion on Newcastle, it seems, and work in that environment. But it seems with some so I think negatives. That, I think some get it. the soap. It adds to the soap opera. I think I think some get it because you just mentioned Jay Humphries as well. He's he he's yeah. really really positive, and he's not even a Newcastle fan. And I think no matter which side, if you play good cop bad cop, you get stick. No matter which side the fence on, because Keith Ga Keith Downey and Pete Graves get battered, and even even you could mention the Chronicle guys as well. Um, whatever you think of those individual reporters, some of them bite back, some of them don't, and it's like Keith Downey does. Eh? Keith Downey bites back. You can on his personal Twitter, but. When he's when he's on camera, he can't go and that's the thing what Newcastle fans need to look at, he can't go and question. Well you can question them but he can't have a personal opinion. And there's a lot of stuff off camera which we learned, Rob, at mm, Sky, yeah. which we will keep it private, but there's a lot of stuff that we learned that is like, ooh, a bit, a bit of an eye-opener on that. Anyways, we'll get off that subject. Um, what we're going to talk about next is the Chelsea game. Um, Let's begin with a couple of things because there's a few to talk here. I'll actually come back over a poll for this one. Was that a penalty, Alonso? Mm -hmm. I, I said it when I was watching it. Um, he gets he gets the ball. He gets the ball, and it perhaps looked a little bit suspect because he had his trail and leg, but he gets the ball. To me, it's never a penalty in a month for Sundays. If that happens out in the middle of the park, you don't you don't give it. So why are you giving it there? And it's it's to me, it goes back to refereeing standards. I think the referees again have been really really poor, um, and it's like a game that's a bit of a chess battle is decided by a stupid refereeing moment. Uh, look at me, look at me, I'll give a penalty, and it it's spoiled it. Uh, in a, such a tight game, I would want it to be Stonewall to be given that penalty. Would that, would, that been, VR. would that have been given at Old Trafford? If, imagine, if, imagine you've got a Man United with Ferguson in charge. Would that have been given against Man United? And the answer is no. no. I think with, with Fergie, it's a different. He, he was a master of winding the referees up. Um, the thing is about that penalty is like when I first seen the that, that, that's not a penalty. The more, it's not that I don't disagree with it. It's like I can see why it was given also. Because the laws state that if you win the ball, great, but if your trainer leg comes flying in, the law does state that that's a penalty. I would never say it's a penalty, but I can get the other argument why that, that trainer leg comes flying would in. Would you be hundred percent sure? No. Not, not even with VAR, no. wouldn't I? Yeah, but that's the fact there. As a referee, you need to be one hundred percent sure that you are given the right decision if you're gonna give it. If you've got any doubt, you don't give it. And I can't see any way how he was one hundred percent sure. To be honest though, Every yeah, I knew it was going to be given because he was itching to give Chelsea every little thing. If Hazard sneezed, he was getting a free kick. Which brings me on another thing because he is yeah, I just didn't like him. He felt it. You get that quiet there, did you? <laughs> right. Um, I mean, even ironic that we were planning the fan cams, what uh, interview people, and ironically. We had VAR as one of them to ask general fans should it be introduced, and I don't think VAR would have cleared that up personally, but I think it should I be do. there. You do? Yeah, because it, it's there about clearing things up. They would have clearly seen that the ball was won, and then. What about his trailing leg, though? Because the law states that's a penalty if his leg goes flying in. He was already down. Oh, he went down alright, didn't he? You knew he went down, he went down, oh my word, he'd been on that programme, that splash on ITV, he was absolutely, <laughs> you know, and it's just pathetic. You've That's been watching splash, have you? Well, no, not my cup of tea. However, Keep digging. However, he went down very easily, and it's always so theatrical and stuff like that. And, you know, it, again, it's just a, a, a kick down below, I, I can't really say what I want to say, but you're up against this lot of money bags, and for it to be decided, by something 
as contentious as that. To me, if I was the VRF, I would not. I'd have been saying, well, that's, that's not a penalty. I, I really, it grinds my gears. You wouldn't have cut that back. I know, um, growing up in my era of football, when I started was getting that? into it, you know, during the 90s and stuff like that, can you imagine the David Batty's and Rob Lays and stuff? They'd have been giving them away every every single uh, game. David yeah, Batty would, he would get to hold you by the neck. <laughs> but that, it, it, was a, it was a really, really, really good uh, challenge. Yeah, he, 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 let him, he let him get the other side. He made a mistake at first, but he went in and he recovered absolutely fantastically. There was no way in a month for Sundays that that should have been given. Um, I was I was disgusted by it and, and to be and for that to be the difference that leaves a foul taste in your mouth like yeah. just surprised that the woman go no there in front of her one of um, our uh, supporters because uh, uh, we're literally we're in open people are walking past can see when that um, let's go to Kyle um, so we, we've got be 2-1 uh, do you feel because you're in agreement with me I don't think Mark is though is that for me, that was too negative for me. Uh, at home, yes, I can understand why Rafa's done that. You can have your say in a minute. Um, but I, when I go to home game, it's like, come on, we've beaten 3 0. I know it's a different manager, a different system, all of that. But as soon as we attack them down that left flank, which is so weak at, we scored from, from again, Hostel. Credit Hostel scoring. But you were saying afterwards that you want to see your team go at it a bit more. Well, the point that made me it late in my fan cam was like the first 20 minutes we should have been really trying to put them under pressure. Similar to how um, like a lot of, like a lot of teams when they're playing at home they they get at the opposition early on and, and they get get the opposition behind the ball, get the crowd behind them and everything like that. But we just didn't seem to do that. That was my initial point. But move like. The Man, like, the Man City game summed up how Newcastle should have played against Chelsea, if that makes sense. Because they like, were transitioned from 3 5 2 to like, 5 3 2 really well against Man City. And I just feel if we would have got the transition a bit better against, against, Man C like, sorry, against Chelsea at home, it would have been a lot more effective. Because, yeah, we did put five men behind the ball against City away, City away but we like, transitioned really well and got the ball forward and we scored, a, scored a brilliant goal through Yedlin. Um, but I, I just feel like if we'd have got the, got the more like more better the transition from five to three would have been like would have been a lot better in the game. Just on the other side, do you want to talk about transitions? Just with regards to that Chelsea game, we would have got they, they, they got the points through a, a very very soft penalty. We'll say that a soft penalty, and they got it through an own goal. It wasn't because they played dazzling football, it wasn't because they, each of their players was worth so, so much and they produced a moment of absolute quality and brilliance. They got it through the softest penalty and ugh, absolutely got an own goal. So I think that own goal, that own goal was going in anyway because Barkley was at the back post. He, 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 would, have, he would have been there to, to tap it in, but that's, that is what they got the, the result through. And it's like... These tactics last season, I put a, a stat up on the Facebook page, our record via the top six, and it actually is one of the best in the league. And, it, and, it's, and it's those tactics that, that did it last season. And we're talking small margins. We talked already about the Spurs game, how close we were. If we look at the Cardiff game, we could have easily had a point from the first one or more. We could have, we could have should have, got the three points against Cardiff. And then we go into this game with Chelsea, and, and to me... Again, we could have, should have come out with a point, if not more. They weren't, for all of the, the, the gulf, and I put something, a, a stat on, the average cost of our team versus the average cost of theirs. And, like, it's just absolutely crazy how close we were. So there was a game plan, and it nearly worked. It only failed just at that end. So, although I agree with what Carl's saying, you don't want to go and say that week in, week out. At the moment, because of the Mike Ashley situation and the, the finances and everything else, we nearly got something out of that. You can see Rafa's tactics and logic, and you can explain it away. Is, is that? But I totally take your point. The amount of times that you go, and certainly I think the sequence of uh, results that we and fixtures that we've got at the moment, it probably makes it even worse because that's all we're seeing: this defensive brand of football that no fan really wants. But how close did we come to getting something out of that? And it's, and it's a bit like this, you know, we're, we're battling giants every week. We're bat we are battling countries and stuff like that and Russian billionaires and all this sort of thing. But how close did we come? A soft, on a soft penalty and a bit of a crazy on goal. Yeah. 
in a, in a Jocelyn moment of absolute thunderbolt magic, and we, we could have actually got a point or three points so, against that. So there is reasons to be optimistic. The band of football were was bad, but what I'm saying is they're just trying to play a devil's advocate a bit. That's what Mark's going to do in a minute. Is it? <laughs> If we keep doing that, that's 12 games a year. Because if you take back, if you think about the top six, I don't think Rafael do it against Arsenal. But Rob, you're a stat man. You love a good stat, yes. don't you? Um, you might have seen the possession stats. We had what was it, 18 percent? 18 percent. Jorginho had 15 percent. That is just whoa, wow. Yeah, I mean, I do like my stats, and stats like that. Yeah, I mean, I find them intriguing. But at the end of the day. I think nowadays there's just too much emphasis on style of play. I mean, yes, we play brilliant attacking football under Keegan, under Robson, but we're not at that level anymore. We're not up there anymore. Let's just sort of face that fact. We can't afford to go and attack Man City. You take Huddersfield, who tried to go up and at Man City. Man City's coming up shortly. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. Chelsea. Uh, Chel um, but yeah, you try and attack. Well, those the top thing six is, though, is that Chelsea. For what Mel Kyle would say, is they could have been there to have a go at, and I think they and they're in at least the first transition, time. you know. <laughs> you you might have said that, but you never know. That's the thing. We'll never know. So it's easy. It's easy to say in hindsight, but I would like to say it's to be a bit more adventurous, in particular at home, because as soon as we started attacking, we scored from it, and they're so weak. The week before, Arsenal mm -hmm. scored two goals from that that left side, their left side again. Yeah, I mean, it it could have been different on the day. But at the moment, when at, at the moment against top six teams, our game plan is damage limitation on the goal difference. And if we're still in the game late on, which we were against Chelsea, then yeah, that's when you really try and go for it and see what happens. Throw the dice. Whereas beforehand, it's just try and limit the amount of damage that we can actually take here on the ship. Trying to stick into it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Trying to make sure that in that final third of the game that we've got a chance of getting a point mm. or three points against these teams. We, like I say, we are playing nation states and stuff like that. And we, we play, even the ones we aren't playing nation states, we, we, we're playing teams who are willing to invest, even the Bournemouths and stuff like that. Mm. We're not. If you look at the bottom of the investment that we put into our team, we're finding an uphill task every single week. You, you've got to, I can see Rafa's logic, you've got to stay in it for the, so that in that final period of that game there's a chance of getting an A point or three points. If we go blow it away in the first 20 minutes having a go and it's 4 5 nil, the crowd's on your back, it becomes all negative, the, the Ashley chance will start and it's just all that big cycle and he's trying to have everybody unified. So he, I, I can see it from what Rafa is, 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 is trying to do and although the results haven't been great, the performances haven't been, haven't been great in some games like, like that, and I understand what Carl's saying. You, we don't want to see that brand of football, but you can understand it totally. Yeah, mm. yeah you definitely can. Right, Mark, I know you'll want to say on that, because you totally disagree with what me and Kyle were saying. Yeah, I do. We also need to look at the fact that we're missing ourselves, we're missing Chelsea, we're missing Richie. The players, yeah, two of those players would have been the ones that helped us get on the, f the front foot. When you've got that, you're trying to mix it up, you're trying to keep in the game there. I do think, yeah, not every game. Like I said, if we do that against the likes of Burnley or Palace and that, I probably would be frustrated. But against a side like Chelsea, which have started off well and have been firing on all cylinders, especially on the front foot with the three players that they've got, I think if we'd went gung-ho and tried to get at them, I think they would have picked us off at the back and I think it would have been... Let me ask you this question, Arsenal home next. Are you happy to just pay your money and watch that again? Yeah. We're happy to do that. Yeah. See, if, um, if that gets, the, if, the, if the performance is going to get results there, I'll, I'll I'll take a defensive performance there. I sat in the Man City game when we're probably the most offensive I've seen there, and we nearly nicked a point against them. So there are occasions, there are times where, like I said, against the big teams, we're going to need to do that. Like I said it, it's always going to be the case there for the first yeah, the first and second third there. We're going to keep it tight there. It's the last little part there where he does try and go. So I think we do need to sometimes do that because, like I said, it is about keeping in the game there. We also need to look at goal different side of things. If you think Spurs, Chelsea, Man City, our goal difference is minus three against those sides. Huddersfield alone against one of them is minus six. So you've got to look at that and think last year goal difference got us 10th. This year goal difference might get us staying up or 13th or whatever. So goal difference is going to play a bigger part in it. And you look and think how the other teams have been doing around there. 
it's not bad. We've kept it tight, we've been in the game. There's no game we've been out of sight in. And that's something that we need to look at there. Kyle, okay. you were going to say something? The we're playing defensive, but you've got to look at it. We've, we've been 1 0 down the first 10 minutes in three games already this season. Defensive or not, we have been. Like, look at Tottenham, we've conceded two in the first 20. Against against City, we're 1 0 down in nine minutes. Against Forest, we're down in net, 1 0 one down in 90 seconds. Def defensively or not, we're, we're still conceding early goals. Well, is that the tactics or is it concentration? Bit of both, you could say. If you're not get, if you're not getting it, you could get the opposite. I get what you're saying. We, we could could well get slaughtered, like get slaughtered. But I'm not saying go four two four. I'm saying at least put put them under a bit of pressure. Get the get the foot on the ball and try and get the try and get the crowd going and things like that. You kind of just park up it from 90 minutes against like so Chelsea. And park your prayer mats. Park your buses. <laughs> more than that, surely. And everything, but. At least, uh, like where, where Chelsea was concerned, we just didn't put them under enough pressure to try and try and win the game. It just looked like until we conceded the first goal, we were playing for a draw. And at home with 52,000, you shouldn't be playing for draws. I'm sorry, I don't care who it's against. Has like, Rafa ever been an attacking manager? Well, Liverpool, I'd say he was, yeah. No, or Torres, not. No, even Carragher said he's always been the defensive manager. He's always there with the defensive side of things there. Yeah, but he's, so, he's, he's had, he, when he's attacked, he's had, in the past, he's had better players. He's had, like, at, at Liverpool, he had Torres, he had Xavi Alonso, and he's went from Xavi Alonso and Torres to Shelby and, and Rossolo. I mean, how are man? Exactly, so you've got to work with the tools that you've got there. Exactly, so, but you need, there. You need to you, at least put... Put them under pressure for the first 20 minutes. Get the crowd going. Like put put them under a bit of pressure. I'm not saying go gung ho for. for yeah, you don't need to attack. To put, you don't need to attack to put the crowd under pressure. If you get if one of the defenders puts in a good tackle, that crowd will get riled up. There, they do it. There. Love the word there. Don't you mark? I can say I might do up. I can say your point of view because I I can say both. I don't think there's a right and wrong answer. I really don't. I think you've got the right to say look, you're at home. You can go and attack. And if you want to play, because let's be honest, you look at the bigger picture and then you look at the money that's not being spent, you look at the squad that's there, you look at the owner, you can see why Rafa's playing that. It's like, but I think just a little bit more ambition, I'm with you, Kyle, on that. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think it's a good argument both both cases make. When the owner shows ambition, Rafa can show ambition. You probably you'll still play defensive, I think. You he will, but, I, but you'll probably have more tools to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, because. Like I said, I mean, you, you haven't got Shelby there, who's a playmaker. You haven't got Richie there, who's a, a playmaker there. He had the tools that he had to work with there. Yeah, he's never going to go defensive for the full 90 minutes there. You'll do it and then try and get it towards the end there, where you've got the chance there. But we need to try and stay in the games there. There. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. He just say there a lot, doesn't he? Just, just like to add. I mean, at the end of the Don't day. Don't say there. Well, <laughs> when Rafa was over there at Real Madrid and <laughs> Napoli and the likes and that sort of thing, he's he's won he's won everything. He's won everything, and there's a reason why he's done that. And it's because he's a master tactician, and that's why they booted him out of. Well, one of the reasons they booted him out of Madrid. You've got to feel sorry for the guy, like say, going from Ronaldo and Bale. <laughs> like Jocelyn and Atso, it's it's a big drop. You've got to you see you've got to deal with what you've got. But um, the man knows his stuff. So I would say you've, if he decides that we've got to go defensive to stay in that game until that last bird and then change things and go for it and see what we can do, then I'm all for that and I would support Rafa you know, to to the end in those type of games. Get right. ready for the next one. There we go. There we go. Right. Okay, Forest. We'll come to you last on the Forest one. Um, so I, I thought that going into the Forest game, I thought, brilliant, a cup game, something to relieve it, get the morale up, a win under it, on, on, off, off the back, monkey off the back expression. And we went down there. It was, it was pretty easy to get there. You know, it was only two, two hours, 45 minutes, three hour drive. Um, what? It was, kind of drive it, was, it was an easy drive, just on the M1. It's pretty. Just as well, it? so, yeah, just as well. Um, it was pretty straightforward to get there. And, um, Rob was there, Kyle was there, and Paul, you were there on that one. Uh, I'll come to Rob on this one. A disastrous start, first of all, and then I don't think we ever recovered. You can talk about, you know, R Rondon coming on and scoring, but yes, in the penalty incident, the Perez one, which should have been a penalty, but we deserve to get put out, in my opinion. Definitely. We were absolutely shocking in that game. We are just lucky that Forrest didn't uh, run rings around us. Lucky that we didn't concede five on that day, because... 
got off to that terrible start, like you say, and we just, for the rest of that first half, we just never looked like scoring at all. We looked anything but scoring. Atsu. <laughs> well, I'll, what do you make? What do you make? I'll, I'll come back to Paul in a minute. But what yeah, do you make of Atsu so being played on the right? Because he was shock on that night, and Rafa just wouldn't change him or switch him to the left at all. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Oh man, w words cannot do justice. How awful he was. I'll I'll let Paul leave on that when, come to you when, in it, a when minute, it comes Paul. to him. Yeah, because I know you like to talk, Paul. So you'll be there for hours. Right. Um, so Kyle. Um, <sighs> Everyone was deflated and everything, and people were watching our fan cams going past in the cars and everything, especially you. Um, <laughs> your response to one of them. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the enjoy the final, enjoy the final, lads. Right. Um, so that was we're laughing at about now, but for me, it was a crazy end of that game. The last five minutes of stoppage time, you know, there was what three goals in there. It went mental, didn't it? It's the most Newcastle thing I've had to score an equaliser and lose 3-1, Lee. Get a 95th minute equaliser and then lose flipping 3-1. The most Newcastle thing you'll ever see in your life, Lee. That, that moment where we scored, that was just... Because we were getting so much stick off Forest fans. Forest had it 90 seconds later with a run, running down the stand, flipping 2-1, I put the Premier League team out. But uh, <laughs> it's just one of them, it's it? just, it just typical Newcastle. What did, what did you make of Longstaff and Sterry coming in that night? I thought, I thought Sterry had had a pretty like a relaxing game because they attacked Clark, so I thought I thought Sterry did okay when he was on the ball and everything like that. Uh, I thought Longstaff though caused caused a couple of problems trying to get the ball forward. Showed didn't show any fear, which is great to see. Like first game, team like Forest with all the prestige and that the club has, like the like the remained with. Um, but yeah, he did he did he did really well and. He showed no fear, which is which for me is a is a great plus because you get a lot of yeah a lot of youngsters are come through and like the, the, it gets on top of them. But Sean Longstaff didn't show any fear, and the more like, the more comfortable he'll get in the first team, the more of an asset he'll be because he hasn't got that fear to to get round. Yeah, I think it was it was a squad that was changed. Yes, um, surprised not to see Roland Aaron's in there, but that squad. He's involved in the match day squad on most days. So right, so we're back then. Right, I'm going to come over to Paul about that Forest game. Paul, how was it, McDonald's? The best part of the night, that. Absolutely the, the best part of the night. Yeah. Extra Why? taste. Yeah, extra taste. What did you have? Yeah, extra tasty burger. Uh, large fries, banana milkshake. Yeah, we don't have a sponsorship. Really. No, no. I mean, I take it from the bag, like. Because uh, yeah, no, no, we didn't have it. We didn't have it on the plate at all. No, but uh, yeah, it was the highlight of the night. And it was just... there loads on that plate. Mm. <laughs> That's a different video. <laughs> <laughs> right on the serious, on the serious note. Then um, we were standing there, and you know you were you were, you got massive praise. So well done for that. And you, you, you were, you just let it go. Your, your raw passion, because you were not a happy bunny that night. And we're seeing people stop in the cars and just watching you, and all that. And you, you were really, really knocked about that night, weren't you? I was really annoyed because the thing is, we said before the game, we were all like really, really positive. It was a lot stronger team than what I was expecting. I was expecting a lot more changes. A lot of them players could have been involved in a Premier League. Uh, squad and could have been involved on a match day. So you're sitting there against. Um, I'm sorry, Forest fans, but you, you, you're a, you're an established Championship club at the moment, and that's how you are at at, at present. You can again you can bang on about your European cups and stuff like that, but that was like what 40 years ago. I don't think there'll be many Forest fans watching, so I think they'll be all right. Oh, they might they might be trolling us a bit more. You you never know. But it, it's it's like against a reserve. Average championship type, you know, a championship side. I was expecting more from that team that that, that played. I was expecting a, a heck of a lot more. I certainly wasn't expecting to have been dumped out. Uh, I was hoping for a few goals and stuff. And certainly, I think the raw emotion of just like equalising as we did, and we were all jumping up and down, and we were over the moon. And to go from that to to doing the normal Newcastle thing, at, like Carl was saying, I'm just throwing it away. In that manner, it it kept our heads hidden. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm surprised if any of the lads could have even fastened their own shoelaces before the match because, like Clark, he was just like giving it on a plate for the in, entire um, 
you know, entire for his team and, and we were soft in the middle. Sterry didn't have to get out of breath and he looked pretty good and so did Longstaff, but that was because he likes a Clark. Every time he touched the ball he was knocking it out, giving it to a Forest player. Um, it, like it seemed to me almost as if this upset about the bonuses and the payments and stuff like that, they just went, you know what, whatever pittance Ashley has offered us, like a free sports direct mug or whatever, it ain't worth it. I, w I just want to go out. It, it was just like, please just score, please just score. And when Murphy bundled it in after what, seconds, it was just like, he looked embarrassed to have, he didn't have to do anything. He just sort of like just stood there and it just went off him. It was like slow motion. It, it was so surreal. I, to me, it was like a team who just could not be bothered, not even to be in first gear yet. They didn't get out of neutral and we went about parking the bus and everything like that. But that is the sort of game where we should have been. We should have been at them. We didn't look like the Premier, a Premier League team. They weren't particularly great, and that grated on me with all the you reds and all this sort of <laughs> abuse we were getting after the game as we were trying to make the video. When, I mean, I was really angry. I mean, I had to really bite my tongue. It's not just going an absolute swearing rant. I mean, I could have literally turned the air blue that night, never mind. Shall, what we, shall, we, shall we move on? Yeah. Right. Um, so I think you know we could have been robbed for that penalty um, as well. Um, I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> but the drive home was just a friggin' carry on as well. We got stuck in traffic on the A1 or the M1, whatever it was. We're in there for a good what was it? Half an hour, 45 minutes. It's a good live stream. Uh, yeah, yeah, pulled in yeah. pulled in the live stream on the Enjoyed Facebook it. page. We had a lovely drive through uh, the factory to <sighs> yeah. Rotherham and Sheffield. Rotherham and Sheffield and also so we had a trip and a half. Um, but that's what you do as a fan. You know, you you have funny stories going up and down the country. We're going to be doing a lot more away games as well. Um, now moving off that, you know, that was diabolical, but. Then what everybody was fearing, he was saying, it could be 3-0 um, against Man, Man City. It was 33. 33. Yeah, I said that, didn't I? Prediction. So, <laughs> went to Manchester. We made a day of it in Manchester as well, but the night before, I got news that my car was knackered, so that didn't go down well. So, we were trying to find last-minute travel, so we got the good old Megabus down, and then we got the train back, and then we seen, the, obviously, the... Uh, Kyle's favourite ground, Old Trafford, which has got a lot of stick off as well. Fantastic Man U fan. Uh, so he's got a lot of stick. We've seen the National Football Museum, which me and Rob have seen uh, already. Uh, so yeah, we made well, what we made a day of it as well. You have your trams as well. You've seen these trams as well. Uh, as well, he if, if you want to um, got him on tram cam as well. So Mark's got a thing about trams. Um, you need to let that go. You really do. And we just set the record straight. I don't like trams. It's just the fact that it was an easy way of getting from the city centre to the stadium. Well. Maps as well, trams. Yeah. So yeah. So if you ever stop seeing Mark outside the grounds, if you need to go somewhere, ask him. He'll help you. Right. Anyways, onto the game then. So yeah, the longest route around it. Yeah. Scenic. Scenic. Yeah. Good word. Good choice. Yeah. Right. So the, the, that was a battle, and I'll come here as well since I'm talking to you. That was a. A much more spirited performance, you know, although we played defensively, say I would accept that more against the likes of Chelsea, I'm going back to Chelsea I know, but I would accept that more because you know, when we went down we had, to, we had no option to attack and we did, we hit them on a fabulous counter attack and goal. I know you can talk about the Jamal Lassell's mistake at the beginning. That goal that we scored, I think that'll be a contender for goal of the season, one of the top ten. But the way we just, the way it built up on the left with Perez and knocking it to Kennedy, to Rondon, then Yedlin bombing on. I thought it was a mint goal. And then obviously I know we went down with a rocket for Kyle Walker and we got beat. But at least the, the lads, the, the total opposite of Forest, can walk off the pitch with the head held high. They showed the passion, they showed the commitment, and that's what was lacking against Forest there. Yeah. And like I said, we did give it a go. Yeah, we're still defensive. Yeah, we're, we're trying to keep things tight. But we did give it a go. We did get it at them. Like I said, wonderful goal by Yedlin. And at that point, I think when we're going in 1-1 one, one at all time, you're sort of thinking, can we nick it? Can we, can we keep it tight there? Can we get, a, get away here with a point? Yeah. I'm probably less disappointed about that result than I was maybe against the Chelsea or even the Cardiff one. Because I think everyone except yeah was expecting a heavy defeat, and obviously when we scored it, it was a nut in the end. Yeah, the way fans Kyle were magnificent, weren't they? I know you're counting the theirs, aren't you? 
Well, you, you, um, you're more concerned about your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I went to go and jump out of the way and um, you mean laptop? God, I had the laptop underneath where the seats when Kyle jumped around the room. I lost my earring as well. That was on the floor somewhere. Uh, it, it wasn't a very good day. Good day for you, was it? <laughs> and then my car and that guy. Overall, our fans were marvellous, weren't they? I mean, there was a bit of a carry-on down the bottom with the Man City fans, but apart from that, you expect that to banter, but great, great for the way fans, weren't it? Yeah, the way fans were... Were, were brilliant on on the day, like and um, there was the, the lot sitting in front of us. They didn't really watch the game, did they? The wall, like trying to win. Yeah, uh, kids, sorry. We, um, I, I mean, I don't even know what they were celebrating because they didn't see a goal, did they? Like <laughs> they just didn't, didn't see anything. Just winding each other up, weren't they? You know, we scored. Let's jump around. It was, just, it was just one of them. One of them, but um, uh, it was a way support on the day. It was brilliant. Rob, I'll come to you because you were there with us as well. Um, didn't get home till daft o'clock yeah. as well, and I thought I was locked out. I thought I was locked out, you know. <laughs> I thought I lost my keys in Manchester, by the way, I, I was ringing Rob. Um, we got in late, but you must have been, I wouldn't say proud, is that the right word? Or is it more, Ooh. it's not proud of the performer, proud of the lad, it's more pride, pride, proud. I don't know, can explain well, that. Well, you can sort of look at the performance of the lads, and yes, the game plan was there, and the team carried out that game plan quite appositely. Um, now that is a big word. <laughs> oh, Does that. anybody here know what that means except from Rob? The so. No, I'll take that as a no. definition underneath at the bottom of the screen, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Leave it in the comments. <laughs> so anyway, um, back to your original question. Um, well, I, caught, I, I kind of came down with a bit of flu, like sort of during the day, and then I got back home, woke up Sunday morning, and yeah, I've been laid low sort of since. And this is this is actually the best I felt since. Is everybody that, passing that on? Saturday. Uh, well, um, like, Shel- like Shelby it. passing it on, but uh, <laughs> never mind. Um, yeah, sorry, I've asked you. That. What is what was the original question again? I've actually forgot. Someone help yeah, us. Okay. <laughs> but hey, the the Man City game. Yes, it's another one of those games. Pride, that one. Like yeah, the yeah, effort, the performance. Was, yeah, it was it was another one of those games there where we did play well. Yeah, but was, at, at the end of the day, we as expected, we got no point from that. Um, Do you see my argument against you know me and Kyle's argument against Chelsea, against Man City? Do you see why we're saying that now? Because oh, Manchester yeah. City, yes, Manchester City dominate the game, what have you, but the, we attacked Manchester City had a little bit, a little bit more. It wasn't massive amounts. But we're in it more than what we were against Chelsea. Well, when I say, well, if we look at the two games. I think we played much better against Man City than we did against Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. I think considering, I think that's our argument. Okay, yeah. Have a little go yeah, sometimes. I, I, I see, certainly see what you mean because you take the top six and it's well, it's more Man City than the rest of the top six. Man City are in a completely different level to the rest of them. They're that good, and so that that performance pleased me a lot more than. You know the result at home to Chelsea. I mean, I was expecting an absolute bloodbath, but yeah, the the performance. It was it was the right way to go about the tactics in a similar way to the Chelsea game. And yeah, it, like you say, there's there's no right or wrong answer on that debate of style of play. But I think just the game plan. You just got to sort of. I can't afford to. I thought it was, yeah, thought it was yeah. really done really well. There's, there, there's, there's too much emphasis nowadays on style of play. You take Mourinho, who parks the bus for minute one in a lot of games, and last season he got 80 odd points, which is enough to win titles. It's just unfortunate that Man City were just in a complete class above. But I just think style of play, as long as you get the results, and the results that you want, you know, draws against the big teams, wins against the teams that are on a par with you. Then what? What's to complain about? Who cares about how you get the points as long as you get them? Yeah, Paul. I'm going to come back to you in a second on the next topic. Right. So we'll move off the Manchester City, and obviously the the league table doesn't look great because we're sitting in the bottom three. But we play three of the big guys, and we've obviously got Arsenal and Man United on the rise. And I think our league st- league start really Palace going forward. Just get them out of the way because. I get criticised for saying the bonus points. Now I say that I say them as bonus points in my eyes. That do we want to be winning teams around you, and that's where you pick up your points. That's how you stay in the division. And I think the priority, Rafa has already said, unfortunately, which doesn't sound very optimistic, but that's because of the owner that we've got is staying in the league, and that's what we've got to aim for first, and then look higher. But we'll, that's for another video for another day, anyways. Um, I'll get one person's view, Paul, on this one. Was the the other night, Doncaster's first team got trounced. 
by our under 21s 3-1 and a lot of those under 21s who are not expected to go out on loan and they never did and the likes of Aaron's wasn't playing because he was pulled out with some sort of loan Woodman didn't play because he was with the England 21s and a lot of them the big guns now are all loaned out and that was just a fabulous win for them it was absolutely brilliant I mean um, to be fair these lads in this uh, under well, it was under 21s, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, technically. Technically. Uh, Even it, though you can play five over age 21s, yeah. which doesn't make sense. Uh, to me, if I'm in that, that team, given the transfer window that we've just had, I'm seeing a definite route to first team football. So it gives them a huge incentive to stay and fight because you've seen the likes of Sterry uh, and Longstaff already make a, make a jump up. So the rest of them lads, they've got to see that because of the way Ashley's running the club, there will be opportunities when injuries come up and suspensions start to hit. So uh, yeah, the, the incentive is there for, there for them to go um, and to put in these performances. Against well. professionals as well, yeah. first team professionals. I was, I was so impressed, I mean, I saw the highlights. Uh, I know some people went down to the uh, to the game, obviously with my connections uh, down in uh, South Yorkshire. Um, it was just such such a good. It was it was surprising. I was expecting them maybe a draw or a loss. To be honest, well, even Grant McCann was saying that Newcastle deserved the win quite easily. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The goals were good. Some of the play was really Split really good. Split passes, yeah. Even that bizarre incident, uh, you know, when the goal the, net. yeah, with mm -hmm. the goal net and the, the equaliser and all of that, it didn't put them off. They showed a great level of maturity and desire. Uh, and I hope they go a long way in this competition. Uh, I mean, the Sunderland fans, they, they, want to, oh. they, want, they want to play us in the final. They want to play our under-23s in the final. thought you might bring them up. <laughs> oh, yeah, def definitely. Any any opportunity just to have a little low blow at them, our lovely neighbours from down the A19, I'll always take that opportunity to play. Yeah, um, I've had to tell Paul off a couple of times on the Facebook page for posting a lot of Sunderland stuff as well. He, he's uh, got, a, got a sharp tongue about them. Right, um, and then finally just wrapping up the changes that we've made and what you're actually generally thinking. Obviously the two presenters which have left as well, so please be nice people. Um, uh, Rob, you've stepped up. You're now Facebook admin. Um, we're going to be doing some sort of plan to get the more the columnists more involved as well and now you're on video quite a lot so first mm. of all for me thank you very much oh thank you and you've obviously you've been on live tv <laughs> i mean that's that's a big jump for you of course you know it's thanks to you that i've massively grown in confidence in front of camera i probably wouldn't have even been able to do countdown if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't for you i know that was sort of the early stages yeah. uh, of meeting you um but then just the amount of confidence I've had and hey I'm doing a master's in sports journalism which would not uh, I am adamant that would not have come about if it wasn't for you know you giving me the opportunity to write for the website and um, doing stuff to, to camera as well you know I'm just and I I'm, think what it's also is we're made friends as well yeah you know great friends with everyone here everyone else you know Shark and Alicia who have left uh, like we're good friends as well um, but I'm I'm doing something that I love and it's you know thank you thank yeah, you to like you and the community that we've we've got here at Newcastle Fans TV and you're not the only one Paul you were nervous obviously doing videos you never stopped them now which is a good thing on Facebook and you were nervous what people might think of you and now you've grown in confidence as well and I think us three were saying when you went there that we were quite surprised how easy you were on the camera you might you might have hit it like your nerves and that but you've come out and you're like I mean, it's actually it's pretty good on camera we were all saying that weren't we yeah I think the, the, certainly the first game that we came to and appearing on the camera it, 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 <laughs> I was, certainly was feeling it inside. I was really, really nervous and apprehensive about it all. And obviously, I've been involved a long time with the Facebook page yeah. and behind the scenes. And, and we were trying for a long time to get there. you on camera. Yeah, and it was it, it, it was a, it was a big, big step. But I'm I'm glad we've taken that. I'm really you know enjoying it and being part of the team and stuff. Um, you know, I enjoyed. I, I enjoyed the event around going around the Forest game, even if the football itself was absolutely. You know, oh, diabolical. Yeah, I mean, say the McDonald's was the best. So, how do you feel now that you stepped out? I, f I feel really, really good. Um, more know, confident, like Rob. A lot more confident. Yeah, um, enjoying putting videos out, trying different things here and there. Learning as you go. Yeah, learning. I mean, little things. I'll get little messages about can you, you hold the camera this way, that way. Yeah. Little things. Um, and it, it's a massive, massive learning curve. Uh, but you know, I'm enjoying it. 
it becomes a big part of your your yeah. life. I, I don't think people necessarily see all the work that everybody does behind the scenes. It, it's it's not just making the videos. It's it, the, with the stories and putting content out there and trying to be regular and different sort of content. It's really really difficult uh, and and hard, but it's enjoyable. I mean, at the end of the day, passionate about Newcastle United and talking about the club. You know, talking about the club. It's it's just putting putting a voice out there. We want want more people involved and for it to get bigger and bigger. It's grown at such a big, huge, phenomenal rate. Every week you come on and you know there's hundreds more people who are liking the Facebook page, the Instagram, the Twitter, YouTube, everything else like that. Um, I was really sad, obviously, that we, we've we've lost some people along the way. Uh, but obviously excited for them. That, that's going to happen, though, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's, it is going to happen. But excited for them. It, but it's you know, it allows them to concentrate on doing things that they want to do and stuff. Um, it doesn't take effect in us either. I'm yeah. gonna, yeah. I'm gonna cut you off. Right, sorry. Um, so, Mark, how have you felt? Because again, you were quite similar to Paul. Um, you were on Facebook a lot, and it took you a while to get out on camera. And now, you're, you, I wouldn't say you're natural, but you've definitely grown. Would you say? Well, I was the first Facebook admin to come on camera. Yes, just, just to point that out, and then we had Kyle little, and little digger Kyle there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is a case there; it is a learning curve, and I think we all, we, we always will be learning there. I said, I'm not a natural there. I'm not. I think what we've also done as well. You've come on the camera, but we've kind of pushed you into the social secretary role as well, unofficially. Um, so if there's anything that we need to get out and contact and. Um, me and Kyle just push it on you and see you do it and I think that's also another role that you could look at as well because um, when we say social secretary he's basically an organiser more or less um, like even when in the, in the middle of the car let's get the sat nav to you little thing I mean little things like that like even stuff like holding the camera up it's it makes my job a lot easier and I think what what we're doing here is we're building something with fans and people are not going to like us that's just a matter of fact people are going to love us and I think that what we do now is now we've got a sponsorship we've got another one coming as well is look we don't take a wage from it I don't take a wage from it my wage is across the road at Sky I'll, I'll get a good pay packet so what we do is we put the money back in to fuel travel hotel tickets to make sure that we can be at almost every game if not every game for the rest of the season and that hopefully will let us grow as well so sorry I was one blown but anything else you want to add no but just, I think it's a big thank you to everyone who does follow up because they are supportive they do get involved I said it's not. You, you don't really see some that many pages where you do see the followers commenting on there, but that's something that I find with this page, whether or not it's YouTube or Facebook. There, the interaction you, with yeah. with that is massive. You do get that, and you do get that discussion there. People aren't going to always, yeah, agree, agree with you. That's a good thing though, because that's why you want to spark a debate. Yeah. But that's the thing though. That's what I like there. Yeah, even when we don't agree on, on, on tactics there. But that's the thing, that's Even the word there. Yeah. Try not to say it now, are you? <laughs> Let's not say it. Spectacularly. Right. But obviously, again. Can we just point out, Kyle, throughout this, has not had his phone out once there. So, congratulations, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's everybody's thoughts. Um, Kyle, I guess you were quite similar because you were spying on me in one sense, doing a bit of scouting um, when I had to do all the Man United stuff up all by myself because the other gang weren't there and it was like me on my own. So I had to set up the camera, the tripod, interview fans, jump on full-time devils, vice versa. Um, and you would, you would, I didn't know that you were just scouting me there and you were just saying how I operate, weren't you? Well, I did. I did the. I, I was like more. Can see he was the first one on fan comps, but I, I was the one that went on consecutively, and then Mark had the confidence to then jump on because I was, and then Paul after that. So you can see what he wants, but I'm, I'm the forerunner of the free, of, of the free Facebook admins. Um, but um, I think yeah, what I, I did a scouting thing at Burnley. He asked us to go on. Uh, Alicia and Sharky were there for the for the Burnley one, they did the videos, I, did, I just had a little look around to see what was happening and, and then I came on for my first fan cam, my man you won with one, one nil um, so it was a perfect time to come on but the first couple of fan cams I did, Newcastle did nothing but win which is which is just mental, like, Newcastle don't win consecutive games often so, so I felt like at the start it was like a good omen. If I kept going on fan camp, Newcastle would still win. We've done now, but lose since the turn of the year. So since the turn of the season. So um, I don't. But Kyle's an and he's not doing fan camps anymore. <laughs> and how do you how do you feel now? Because again, you were nervous like the others were. 
that coming on, you're going out with Shell, we'll fall straight to do the World Cup videos over the summer as well. Um, are you growing in confidence? Are you still nervous at this, at this stage? No, um, I've, I've, I've grown the, the nervous bit, I think. Um, I, don't, I don't feel nervous on camera anymore. Yeah, you, you, eventually you just, re, you just think the camera's not there in, in the long run, like you said. Yeah, you do, even though we're being recorded, it's just like us there for us. I think we've, we've stepped up, and it's not just us, I've got to say Paul Henderson. Uh, we're, we're at the Sandman, Sandman Hotel. Right. Right, yeah, there, in front of me, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think the meeting I mean now. Um, there, all right, I get it. But, you know, there's there's other people on the columnists. I mean, there's so many uh, columnists who do the odd article here and there online, hence why Rob's going to come in and we're trying to try and organise that, narrow that down to get them more out there. Um, so we've got plans for the website, maybe I put some adverts on there. Twitter is going to just remain just a news source, that's all Twitter is really. And um, that's going to be helped by me and Paul, not that's Paul, the other Paul. And I've got to thank Paul as well because he doesn't come on camera, he doesn't massively message us, but he does help behind the scenes, and especially if the website goes down as well, or something wrong with it needs fixed because I can only do basic stuff. Obviously these guys, the Facebook group, have massively stepped up as well. And like I say, there's a lot of things happening. Instagram's almost a 2K. Snapchat is something that we've neglected a little bit. So maybe we'll pick that up as well, give everybody access to try and just post a bit more stuff. Um, but I think it's good. I think we love what, doing what we're doing. Um, it's nice that people come up and say, hi Ellie, how are you doing? Or hi Mark, how are you doing? And, oh, I saw you the other day, whatever. That's great. That's not the reason why we do it. It's because we love talking about football, we love sporting debate. And, you know, we don't want to be seen as this, the fans of Newcastle. That's not what we are, the voice of Newcastle. That's not what we are. We are, we are the voice of Newcastle Fans TV. That's it, a small group of seven, eight, nine people. And if you want to get involved in it, you know, there's plenty of opportunities. This is for you, not us. Obviously, we're just part of it. There's stuff that you can jump on the videos. I mean, all of these people here, never done videos before and look at them now they can come on and the next step of these well I'll take you out of the equation because I know you've got a lot on with us um, is to start getting editing but possibly even present themselves and just naturally become onto it even in a car even in the, even in what even in the car even in the car um, it's still active, not really <laughs> well, I haven't broke down it just, it just didn't work so yeah, there's a lot more stuff happening, like the live stream as well, that, that went down well, get more people involved when the Dark Knight are here. We're going to be doing a lot more videos at mine in the studio, uh, having discussion, and we're going to be doing that today in this environment in St. James's, which is next door. So there is a lot of stuff in what is involved, even the international fans, we've got a massive 26% following of 15,000 are from abroad, that's a massive chunk to tap into. So if you want to get involved, let us know. Um, obviously, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes, SoundCloud, and any of the podcast apps that you do use, um, give, it a, give it a like uh, if you can. It helps us get found on there too. Um, and more podcasts like this will happen, of course, once a month when we do the review. And again, I've got to say thank you to the sad man for putting us up. They didn't have to. Um, we are in front of a little mini audience, front of, but you know, once again, thank you for the sad man. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching on YouTube. God, I'm rambling on. Sounds like an Oscar. <laughs> Thank you very much. Watch what you're doing. Bye-bye.